Hi everyone. Okay, well, landscapes. One of my most popular topics that I like to uh, menace myself with uh, when thinking about art and the kind of paintings I'd like to do and paintings that I most respond to is um, the difference between a painting that shows you something and a painting that asks you or tells you something. I guess what I, in simpler terms, what I'm saying is the difference between a painting that feels like an experience of a scene or uh, a person, a place, or a thing, rather than a painting that just shows you that person, place, or thing. Maybe that seems like a difference without a distinction, but it's pretty fundamental for me, at least. I'm always urging myself and my classes to try their best to paint experiences rather than scenes. So um, when you use a lot of photo reference, for example, to paint, you can easily fall into the habit of just more or less copying the photo and painting scenery. I don't want to disparage that as a bad thing to do. If that's what you love, if that's what gives you joy, you should absolutely do in life, I think, as long as you're not hurting anyone, whatever it is that causes you joy and um, sparks your passion, you should do it. For me, um, painting is, a, at least of late, a bit more of a digging process and trying to get a little bit more authentic as far as um, painting from dreams, memories, personal experience, and a combination thereof. But that's not another topic, but a, but a, uh, a side road we don't need to go down. I'm urging painters in my groups who love, for example, to paint cityscapes, urban scenes, architectural subject matter, which I do love too, but uh, I think it can come with a, um, with a sort of a built-in problem, which is it is very easy to get into the habit of just doing a lot of details and literally painting. You're painting the thing you're looking at rather than how you feel about the thing you look at. And that's a very different kind of painting. So back to painting images of architecture or cityscapes, urban areas, whether they're real or imagined. One little trick that works, a very sort of a specific trick that helps, is to not paint um, a large expansive view, but rather zoom in and paint a view that's a bit more cropped, a bit more intimate, a bit more, um, it doesn't show you the whole subject, for example. It just shows you a bit of it or a corner of it or, and in this way, I think you can much more easily start to understand how you're painting your experience, your interpretation, your, uh, your take on this, this thing, whatever it is. I think that approach can hold to painting figures, portraits, still lives. Uh, definitely, I know for, from personal experience, it works in painting urban scenes, architecturally based subjects, etc. So today, as a big wind up, that is to just say today, I'm going to try to apply that similar principle to a more landscape heavy painting. People often accuse me of not liking landscape paintings and, and uh, there's some truth there. It's not that I don't like them, but I often find, often find they don't move me. They might impress me because they're pretty or beautiful or extremely well done and all that's well and good, but I don't feel much uh, emotional resonance. Certainly, if it just contained the uh, subject to my own efforts in painting landscapes, <clears throat> I think it's true that they can often feel um, a bit formal or distant, removed, presentational is the word I like. They show the viewer something but they don't really tell them anything at all. They don't have much to say. So what I'm gonna to try to do today as a demonstration here is a fairly, 
I think, appealing and fairly straightforward landscape-based view, but I'm going to try to apply some of those ideas of, of cropping in a little closer, of showing a less expansive overall view to show uh, a bit more of an experience, to try to express a bit more of my emotional experience with this particular site, and hopefully by my technical choices of cropping, formatting, values and color, etc. by the time I'm done, the painting will feel much, um, I'm hoping, more emotive, more experiential, more of a, more of an event than just uh, showing what's literally there. I'm going to reiterate, I'm not here to judge why anybody paints. I always think it's better to, to make things, to paint, draw, build, whatever you like to do. It's always better to do that than not do that. And I always say, and I mean it, I don't believe there's any one right way to do any of those things. So um, there are painters who think their obligation, their passion is to literally paint exactly what they see before them. And they do an amazing job and they can be very successful and popular. And so, again, I'm not here to say that's a mistake. I'm just here to say in listening to my own artistic instincts, I'm going for something slightly different. That doesn't make it better or worse. It just makes it slightly different. And there is the key, I think, for making art or doing anything. It's not a zero-sum game. You don't have to win so that somebody else can lose. There can always be different ways of looking at the same thing different, unique ways of experiencing the world. Which, just for the record, is one reason I love artwork so much, because it is so, um, if you look at it and approach it in that way, it's the most um, accepting, forgiving, and inclusive of um, activities. It allows for a wide, wide range of expression, both in media and application, that uh, one style or one approach does not negate all others. Um, it just hopefully opens and expands your mind to accept the reality that there are other ways of looking and seeing. Anyway, I didn't mean to get philosophical and preachy, but just that's me. I think if the world just spent more time painting, we'd all be better off. Even if we do very bad paintings or paintings that we argue about, it's better than the alternative. So where am I literally in the world? It is a real place. I do a lot of paintings that are completely imaginary with made up subject matter. But I thought for this exercise, it might be important to interpret an actual place rather than just make something up entirely out of whole cloth. So this is very near to where I grew up in Ohio. This is an arboretum, Dawes Arboretum. This is a uh, particular and uh, my favorite section of that arboretum, uh, a Japanese garden that was oh, I should have these facts at my fingertips mentally, but I don't. I believe in the 60s, the mid 60s, um, this was commissioned and landscape architects came in from Japan to help design and build this. It's a very, very beautiful part of the park. Um, it's a man-made lake, but there are islands and um, a lot of Asian plantings, the one that the climate here will support and um, um, Japanese inspired elements. There's a tea house and pagodas and uh, a lot of these very simple, beautiful bridges arcing over bits of water. So um, it's an incredibly pleasant, beautiful place to be. I have 
very, very deep and very fond memories of it. I have painted this little bridge, oh gosh, countless times from various angles. Um, so it is something I feel very strongly about. I'm gonna um, no doubt do a little interpretation on it here because as I said earlier, what I'm trying to do is a little bit less presentational view of this area of the park and a little bit more experiential. So I'm zooming in a little closer than I might. Um, I've done this bridge, paintings of this bridge from far away, from somewhat close up, from various angles. But I thought this composition might have more powerful, might have more power if it's really zoomed in, really quite tight and intimate. And to use fewer words, I think that's what I was hinting at when I was talking about doing streetscapes or architectural views. If you uh, zoom in or do a detail or a very, very close up view of anything, any subject you paint, it's going to automatically feel a bit more intimate because you're looking at it much closer. So in very simple terms, that's what I'm going for here. I'm not trying to be photorealistic about the, the bridge exactly. It's fairly simple to draw, but, but as far as its surroundings, I'll probably um, be relatively true, but I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, artistic license. I'm trying to set up this um, composition of um, a very tight, intimate dialogue of substance and void. So there'll be substance on the right side of the bridge and on the left side, rocks, landscaping, trees, etc. The bridge itself will connect and then the void, the empty space between the time and the space over which the bridge spans. Um, anybody who follows me at all or knows my work at all knows that I'm absolutely sometimes boringly crazy about bridges. Um, I just think I love them on a childlike way. I've always loved bridges, but in a slightly more mature way as a human and as a painter, I love them for that very reason. Just the sense that they're, they're built in connections. Two things have to connect. They speak about movement, about change, about evolution about the passing of time, just in the very simplest terms. If you're on one side of a bridge, whether you're on a bike or walking or driving or whatever, and you're going to the other side of the bridge, that whole exercise is about transition, about movement, about changing from wherever you are to wherever you're going. So you don't have to be a great philosopher to read into that and find all sorts of narrative rich ideas for um, paintings or just for the way you look up life. Things um, are always in a constant state of change and very different things uh, always connect in some way where they can. So I'm being a little fanciful about some of these rock shapes and about some of the landscaping that I'm including. I'm designing a bit of more bonsai inspired conifer greenery stretching down over the rocks on the left side here um, to help enhance the focal point that I'm going to create here. Oh, I should show you a little sketch I did. So if you compare it to the reference photo, I think you can see what I was doing. Of course, it's simple terms. I've just zoomed in, but I've also increased the arc of the bridge a bit. I've elongated the, the vertical energy of this painting. And then um, I'm trying to set up um, what I hope will be a successful and interesting 
connection of energies, the dominantly vertical, this important energy here of the horizontal connecting the left to the right side of the painting with the bridge, then the rhythm of darks and lights. Darks, darks, lights, dark under. And um, always wherever the darkest dark meets the lightest light of your painting is where the viewer's eye is most immediately going to be drawn. And that's a really simple way to establish a, a focal point. So just very expectedly, probably it'll be right here, the bridge, a little bit of the left, a little bit of the right side, dark, light, dark, just that simple. And then all these energies, the vertical energy, as I said, the, the y-axis, the x-axis of the horizontal, setting up the connection, and then a tertiary energy in the diagonal, I think. For some darks here, will speak, I think, to some darks here. You'll get a little bit of vertical energy there, a little bit of complementary vertical energy there. Secondary, but I think it'll add a, if I can pull off that effect, it'll make a nice um, emotional resonance. Editing out a lot of the background or changing it for certain, simplifying trees, editing, designing them as I go. And I have some ideas about coloration too, which we'll get into a little bit later. I set the horizon just about here, so it's as if I'm standing on the surface of the water. No, I can definitely not walk on water, but um, just assuming perhaps that the viewpoint is taken from standing on a rock in the water or something like that, a little bit lower than standing on the landmass or certainly on the bridge, so that I get a sense I get a little bit of opportunity to look up at the underside of the bridge a little bit more than the photo would show. And what that does, it affords me um, the opportunity to enhance this vertical story, storyline that's going through. And also just a little bit of drama that's, um, that I think is often lacking in landscape paintings. Certainly not always, of course. So yeah, part of what I'm doing here today is just analyzing my my relationship to painting landscape paintings and why I don't do as many of them as I wish I did. And I'm trying to figure out why. And I, I think I'm on to it. I think it's the sense that they they just so often look pretty nostalgic but uh, a bit cold and remote to me. They don't often feel, they don't have enough drama. Apparently I like a lot of drama. Not in my day-to-day -day life, I don't. But in my paintings, yeah, I sometimes do. And by drama, I don't mean wringing your hands and crying and screaming. I just mean emotion, I suppose, to be, to be honest. This is a very emotional place for me. Um, I just don't think nostalgia is the only emotion I'm going for. This place doesn't speak to me just of the past. It's very present to me um, now because it still exists, yes but the feelings of the place are very present to me. I think about nostalgia a great deal. And you know, obviously it's rooted in memory, but our memories can be quite present. They don't have to be always relegated to the past with that sad, uh... boy, I am getting philosophical, but I can't help it that sad sort of resignation that, oh, that was then, this is now, nothing is ever as good as it was. I honestly don't buy that. I just don't. If something was ever great and it is no more, it's still great. The memories of it are just as great. If you've lost a person, it's tragic. But your love for them and your memories of them are ever green, they're always there. So they're not really lost. 
if you forgot about them entirely, then yeah, that's something to mourn. But um, yeah, well, I don't wanna get that heavy, but I think you see what I'm saying. So I'm just redesigning this waterways on either side just a little, just to add a little bit more height and weight. I don't want a lot of detail here, but I do want uh, these energies to read through clearly. So yeah, this place figured very heavily in my childhood, growing up all the way through high school and college. And, but I still go back there every, I live on the East Coast now in New York. So my hometown and my family is only about eight hours away. I go back and visit quite a lot. I'll be back there very soon again. This place is always um, top of the list of destinations to go visit. So yes, I have a lot of nostalgic memory-based feelings about this place, but it's still very much alive. Uh, yeah, okay. I really want this diagonal um, connection to set up, so I think some of this energy I'm going to have to work in and some lower plantings that aren't really there that I'll just invent. So that sort of indicates one reason I don't paint as many landscapes as I do, perhaps uh, more urban subjects. But I don't know that I'm saying I want to change that. I think I'd like to just always be open to whatever subject um, feels right. And I don't ever want to shy away from it. I don't want to be drawn to any subject because it's easy or my wheelhouse or whatever you like to call it. And I definitely don't want to shy away from any subject because I, I think it's not my, my thing or my brand or whatever word people love to use. I think if you're a painter or any kind of creative person, you, you find a way in, a way into what you paint. And that means subject matter is not as important as, um, as your way, your point of view, your way of looking at the world. Some years ago, I found my way in and I realized it was this idea of contrast, which sounds like a simple word, but I don't just mean contrast in terms of light versus dark though I certainly do mean that. I also mean contrast of the vertical, the horizontal energies, contrast of dark and light, yes. Contrast of uh, in seen in complementary colors, warms and cools. The complements, however, of ideas, the built environment, the natural world. What is solid, what is a void? what is there, what is not there, what is actually there and can be observed, and what can only be imagined or remembered. Um, those are all contrasts too, and those are all the ideas I love to play with in my paintings. So when it comes to painting landscapes, all those things are there. When it comes to painting portraits or figures, certainly they're all there. Everything has architecture in a, in a sense, in the sense that we're always just painting shapes. Um, shapes of value, shapes of color. But um, yeah, if you find your way in, that's sort of one idea that always defines perhaps the way you look at the world or most clearly defined to your point of view. Just nothing is off limits.
And also it makes it easier to do what I was talking about earlier, which is trying your best to express, to paint your experiences rather than just the thing you're looking at. Um, it just makes all the difference in the world. It's, it's liberating, but it's also just an entirely different lens through which to, uh, to see the world. So when I walk around or drive around or wherever I am, yes, I'm one of those people that always says, oh, look at that, there's a painting, there's a painting. But I don't always mean, oh, that thing or that building or that scene or that person would make a great painting. Sometimes I do, sure. But what I really am responding to often are patterns of light interesting juxtapositions of one thing and its opposite thing meeting um, something very neat clean rational and orderly meeting something very jumbled and chaotic that's a whole other way to look at the world contrasts juxtapositions um, I love drawing I think um, I'm always telling others and myself to not overdraw your subjects. You can start to get very tight and paint by number. So I'm trying to be sketchy about this and just leave it, leave it loose. And I think it's good. I can um, draw in a lot of these landscape elements just with my brush and just let it happen. So I don't think I really need to draw much more. Um, I know I want a bit of clarity and crispness, harder edges here, certainly here and here, but I also want to use uh, within the world of painting, the contrast of clarity, um, definition or detail, if you like, and then areas where it's very loose and very runny and very fluid, very much watercolor. I want the whole range of watercolor to be expressed as much as I can. So I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna prep my palette now, and then I'll be back to start painting. Just so you know, uh, this is, um, the surface today is arches, uh, 140 pound, 300 gram, rough surface, it arches bright white. Um, pretty beautiful, dependable surface, I think, to paint on. Um, I was just sketching with one of my favorite black wing pencils, um, the 602. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you all again in just a couple of minutes. Thanks for watching this, this half.